Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're going to be continuing building our adder. Now we already have this nice XNOR gate for us, but we need it to be a half adder. And of course, to get a half adder, all we need to do is we need to get an AND gate. Here's the question though, how on earth do we fit an AND gate into here? Well, that's the question we're going to be addressing in this video. Now, there's a couple of ways of making an AND gate, I'm sure you know. One is with the two torches, the other is with a piston. I'm going to opt for the piston method because I honestly don't see any way to fit a separate logic gate into here without completely destroying this design. So, first off, we're going to need some way of making sure that when both these inputs are on, an output's on. Now this right here is one of our inputs, so what I'm going to do here is actually place a repeater here, and I'm going to have this be the first input to the AND gate. Now the second input will be right here. Now you notice this is going to cause some slight problems with our wire right here, but that's okay because if I change this to glowstone and this to glowstone, that will fix any bud issues I have here because this will make sure that none of these wires create lock up detectors. So yeah. Now, I'm going to need to update it. But yeah. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure this piston gets powered somehow. And again, you don't have to do this exactly like I'm doing. You could, if you wanted to, build an AND gate in a completely different way. I'm just doing it this way because this is the way that makes the most sense to me. But before I do that, one thing I'm going to just fix immediately before I even get a chance to make the mistake, if the block is right here, and I have a wire right here, if this is off, then power will go through here. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a block like this, because this is the only possible way I could go at the moment. Well, without causing errors, I suppose. But yeah. So now again, we're back to the issue of how do we get power from here over to the piston without causing any delay. Well, put simply, you really can't unless you change everything again. But there is something we can do. Because just because this is the input that would ideally power it doesn't mean it's the only thing that we can power it with and still produce correct results. One interesting way we can do it is we can power it like this. and. I know this probably seems weird, but this has to do with how an XNOR gate works. It's exactly like an AND gate, if you think about it. The only difference is an XNOR gate is on when both inputs are off. And here's the thing. When both inputs are off, this input is off. This is one of the inputs to the AND gate. So even though this one's on, this can never be on without changing this one. So if I turn this one on, it retracts the piston. So you notice that's still off. So yeah, it's just taking some interesting advantage of the way the logic gates work. And so therefore, of course, the only time it'll ever be on is when both inputs are on. So yeah, interesting thing if you didn't know it. You can, if you can't get the power from one of the inputs, you can get the power from the output of the XOR gate. And the reason this won't cost us any extra delay is because it's a piston retraction. And piston retractions, again, don't add any delay. And again, there's a piston extension thing, but we're ignoring the falling edge for now because we're going to completely get rid of it pretty soon. So now all we have to do is we have to do the same thing for the other edge, or not the other edge, sorry, thinking too much about edges now. We have to do the same thing for the other side. And you'll notice we can't really do that particularly easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to do like this. And... yeah. So I'm just doing it with a block update detector, instead of just straight up powering it. And the reason is, my wire, when I stack it, will be right here. If I put it down, then that would cause some cross interference, which I don't want. So yeah. And now, I've turned this, I've turned both of these into half adders. So, there's the XNOR, and there's the AND. So, one, there we go, two, there we go, and if I flip this we should be back to original case both off. So yeah, 
And it, I should have mentioned this in the last video, but if you don't know how adders work, you should look at my Ultimate Guide to Redstone video about how adders work, because that's probably going to make all this make a whole bunch more sense if you actually understand how adders work. So yeah, so there we go, we now have a half adder, so yeah. Now, the next step into making a complete adder is the carry wire. So, these are the output of the AND gates, that means the carry wire should be like this. So yeah, and again, if you don't know how this works, look at instant carry logic, because I'm not going to be re-explaining it here, that would take far, far too much time. So now, these are the pistons that are going to cut off the carry, which of course will be powered by the XNOR gate. So, thank you, Mr. Piston, for pushing me in there. I really appreciate that. And yeah. So, there we go. And now we have function carry system, pretty much. Yeah, there we go. It's really that simple. Now, the only thing we need now is our second XNOR gate, which, of course, this will be part of. So, this will be the input to... the second input to the first... <laughs> the second input to the first bit of the second XNOR gate. Yeah, I know. But but yeah, this will be the second input, so this is where I'm going to start building the next XNOR gate. Now here, this XNOR gate won't be going into any ridiculous carry system, so we don't have to worry about the interesting derps that can come up. So I'm just going to build a very simple 1.5 tick XNOR. And yeah, so I'm going to start like this. You might have seen this design before. So now it goes like this. Now this would by default go down, we don't want that, so I'm going to do like this. And yeah, this is basic multiplexer based XNOR. This blocks that end, and let's power through there. And this is of course our second bit. For our first bit, we're going to need another one over there. We're also going to need a third one for stacking purposes. So we actually have to build three of these. So, PC people, you now understand some of the pain of the people trying to build on Xbox, having to rebuild all of these things over and over and over. Yeah. Th this is what it's like. How does it make you feel? Okay, this is just going in a completely wrong direction. I'm just going to stop now. <laughs> okay. So there's all the wires. Now we just need the pistons. It's going completely... And yeah, now here comes the real challenge. How do we power the pistons? Yeah, exactly. This is a really tricky part of building the entire adder. And the solution I came up with was identical to the one Hink came up with, and the one that pretty much everyone else I know who's tried to build an adder like this came up with. So if you come up with a different way of doing this, I'd be quite interested to see how you do it. But Here's the way I do it. This one goes over like this, and this. That's, and again, it's the same way Hink does it, so, yeah. And... I suppose I could go down, but... Not sure if that'll give you advantage, but why not? I'll have it going down. Really don't think that's gonna make any difference, but, you know, why not? Okay, so that's that one. This one, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna have that powered by a bud instead of regular one. It's gonna do the same thing because of the fence gate. But yeah, and this one's going to power like that. Now I'm going to need wire here for stackability purposes. I'm also going to need a block here for stackability purposes, because that's going to have wire here. And I believe this should give me a complete adder. Of course it's going to be powered, so just to test it, I'm going to power this. And if we built everything correctly, this should be doing addition. So... Let's add two plus. Are you ready? You're never going to guess what the answer to this is. Two. It's four. Wow. This thing's a total genius right here. Three plus one is four. There, hey, there we go. And of course, three plus three is six. Which, oh yeah, four and two, six. Uh, for some reason, I thought we couldn't represent that, but I'm just being a derp. We can definitely represent 3 plus 2 with 3 bits. 3 plus 3 
Is that 3 plus 2? I can do 3 plus 2, why not? 3 plus 2 is 5. So there we go, we've built a complete adder. So yeah, there we go, we have a complete and functional adder. So, that's going to be pretty much everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and in the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this adder, and we're going to be deciding how many bits we need, and additionally, we're also going to be figuring out exactly how fast this is. And if we have time, we might even build that device that makes sure the falling edge never happens during computation. So, thank you, and I will see you next time.